Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About House. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, uh, we're traveling today. Woohoo! So we're um, we had to find a place to do a, a video, and because what we want to do is we want to cover the weekly change in the market. So um, what we did is we oh, we have uh, updated data, and then we'll do the same thing next weekend. We'll get you updated data. Uh, we'll talk about all the changes in the market. But uh, so we'll start with the market action index, mm -hmm. right? Now it's as you can see on this slide, it's thirty six. Mm -hmm. It's going up. We're going to show you another slide that's very interesting. Okay. Um, uh, 36, it, you can see the little where it says last month and there's a gap. It was like 34 uh, last month. So it's gone from 34 to 36. It's not a substantial gain. Um, but when I show you the next chart, you're really going to be blown away. Okay. Right, but it's a pattern because, you know, we were at 32, 34, and now we're at, th we're at 36. So it's a pattern and it's, uh, it's a trend. Okay. So this is the market action index over the last four years. It goes all the way back to, actually it's almost five years, it goes back to 2018, okay? And if you look at all of 2019, they're over toward the left. The market action index never broke 40. <laughs> it stayed in the upper 30s, real literal. It went down to like 36, and it's 38, 39, pretty much the whole time, right? So you're saying that the market now is the same or hotter than it was in 2019. Okay, so we just said the market action is 36, but that's the 90-day average. Mm -hmm. The seven-day average is 40. Okay, so it's definitely hotter than it was in 2019. The seven-day mark, <laughs> okay. The real estate the last seven days, meaning even with interest rates have, have been going up the last two weeks, because mm -hmm. everyone said, as soon as those interest rates go up, man, the market's gonna collapse and die. Well. Why then is the market action index higher than it was in all of 2019 when interest rates were like 3%, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's, it, there's not a one-for-one -one correlation between interest rates. There isn't. I mean, a couple things. First of all, people have to live somewhere. I say this all the time. So it's the spring buying season. People are out buying, period. Uh, you can also consider a couple of other things. First of all, uh, People are adaptable, so the mm -hmm. current interest rate environment uh, has uh, definitely lost its luster. Okay. <laughs> and then the other thing is, you are going to have people who are saying, hey, um, the home that, that I wanted came on the market, I'm going to go ahead and buy it, and besides that, interest rates may still go up higher, so I may as well go ahead and bite the bullet and buy the house now. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff, and mm -hmm. you guys know that we're pragmatic, and but we look at all the data. so. A lot of the information we've been given by people's anecdotal and opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, when this happens. So we're going to talk about that as we go through, because there's a lot of numbers here. So here's the next one. I zoomed in on this because, as you can see, there's a couple interesting things in here. The first thing is the median list price. It was 483 back in January 20th. Here we are in early March. It's 499.9, so it's basically 500,000. It's, it's going, and you can see it's basically gone up or stayed the same every week. That does not happen in a market where prices are falling. Right. So this is happening for a couple of reasons. One, like I said, people have kind of gotten over the whole interest rate bit. And then the other part is it is the spring buying season. So let, let's not um, underestimate that. We, are, we were expecting this and we, we said this was going to happen. This is going to continue to happen for the next few weeks. It will probably start to wane once we get into May or June. Does every year. Yes. And it, it, and it declines into November. Mm -hmm. and, what's, and what's happened typically is that it it, it it goes up six, seven, eight percent, nine percent, and then it drops a few percent going into the into the fall. Okay. So uh, and then last fall and, and you know it, it normally is dropping three or four percent, drop nine percent, it mm -hmm. dropped nine percent, but it's going back up again. Right, but it so dropped the, nine percent on the back of having gone up twenty percent. So Right. <laughs> Still up year over year. That's another thing people are just, you know. So anyway, mm -hmm. uh, price per square foot as you can see it's the, the each one of those little ticks is a, is a dollar. It's been at between 249 and 250. It's basically rounding. It could be 249.4, 2.8. That statistically, we we did a video. I think it was last week where we said, "Hey, this is the bottom." Remember, this lags by up to two months. So we're, when we're looking at these numbers, we have to actually wait two months to see what's happening right now because these properties going under contract mm -hmm. we don't know what they sold for for two more months when you see this number this is a two month old. so this is actually this was the january mm -hmm. this is what homes that went under contract in january were selling for our contention is that when in two months from now when we see the february numbers 
they're going to be higher than January. This price for short foot will be higher. Right. And that this median list price going up is also an indication of that. That means people are chasing the market up, right? Right. Okay. Um, okay. The other one on here that's interesting is that median days on the market. It's starting to drop. As you can see, it was, it, you can see the little downward thing. And usually once this ticks down, it just keeps going down all the way to, you know, June, July, and then it starts going back up again. Right. So it's going down because remember, there is less inventory that, than usual and uh, you've got people coming back into the market and purchasing, which means homes are selling faster. Okay, here's another one on this slide I thought was interesting. Um, inventory. Okay, this is every single week since November. The inventory has decreased every week. Now, inventory is super, super instantly uh, takes into account everything happening in the market. Meaning if interest rates go up, they've been going up for two weeks now. Inventory, if, if interest rates were in effect inventory, we would have seen it already. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why would we have instantly seen it in the inventory numbers? So we would have seen it because people would, would stop making offers, right? So if you can only afford X number of dollars at this interest rate, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to get out of the market altogether because the interest rate went up and you can't afford it anymore, or you're going to change your sites and go from this level of purchase to this level of purchase because now it matches, uh, the interest rate matches what, what your payment um, that you can afford is. So that, all, that's kind of where we are. All interest rates doing is taking out the people who need to get 100% loans. People putting a ton of money down, people paying cash, don't really care what the interest rates are. They don't just don't. Right. They're going to suck it up. Um, interest rates are six and change right now. Mm -hmm. That's the 30 year. If you get an FHA, if you get a VA, if you get a jumbo, they're much less. And why didn't, I mean, interest rates were 18% at one point. Right. So and housing didn't crash, no, surprisingly. No, so interest rates do not crash the market. The economy crashes the market, right? People are feeling uncertain about their jobs. That's what crashes the market, but not interest rates. Okay, here's another shot of the inventory. Um, as you can see, if you go all the way back to the to the left, back in 2019, the inventory peaked in Las Vegas at about 5,500. We never hit it. There was this consensus out there but among the crashers and other people that inventory would go so high that everyone would have to dump their price to sell. We never even got back. And it looked like it was screaming up there. We said, go look at all our videos from last summer. It was, we were returning to a normal market. We were, we basically got to a le inventory level that was not even normal. We never got back to normal inventory level and it's already tanking. And then remember that dash line is leading mm -hmm. and you can see that inventory is, is the only thing crashing is inventory. Right. And so when you're looking at those inventory numbers, the thing that you have to keep in mind is that it's not just that we have low inventory numbers. Why do we have those? Well, we have those for two reasons. One, because sellers are not putting the house on the market, and two, because whatever is being placed on the market is being absorbed very quickly, and so that inventory number never gets to grow. Um, the next one's price per square foot. Now remember, this is looking back. This is looking mm -hmm. back up to two months, 45 days to two months, okay? Um, if, if you go back where it was 175 bucks a square foot, the little dashed line was superimposed over the solid line, meaning home prices were changing at a very low rate. The rate of change was low. The seven day and nine day, 90 day average were the same. Home prices were relatively stable. You saw once we got into 2020, then that little dash line was more, was higher because home prices were changing at a high rate. You all, anyone who bought or sold a house experienced that in those years, right? Mm -hmm. But then you saw it crossed last spring and it started declining. And that was the, uh, the decline that we saw. That's a an adjustment. But it's leveled off now. We saw that for six weeks straight that the median uh, price per square foot, 249 to 250. Mm -hmm. And that's averages out of our overall properties, whether luxury or, or whatever, it's or single family homes. But remember, this thing lags. And we actually saw that they're touching now, that the, that, that dash line is superimposed on the line. So what that says going forward is either it's going to flip over and what happens if the little dash line flips over and becomes more than the 90-day average? That means that we've got a market where 
uh, home prices are, in are increasing. Okay, that's one possibility. The other possibility is it just stays the same and home prices basically kind of go sideways for a while. Right. So in this market, it's probably going to be just a slight increase because it's springtime. And yeah. because we don't have inventory. And, it, and there's nothing to say home prices won't adjust again. Mm -hmm. um, home prices adjust all the time. <laughs> they home, adjust all the time, right? And we don't know what interest rates are going to do. Nobody knows. And we don't know what inventory is going to do. But I can tell you this. I'm, I'm looking more at the inventory numbers mm -hmm. than I'm looking at what interest rates are doing. Yeah. To me, I, that's more important. Th that is more important because the lower the inventory level, the more pressure there is on buyers to not... Um, try lowball properties and the more support there is for property values. And the other thing too that I hear is, oh, well, but these people, they're just going to, they're paying too much and they're not affordable and they can't afford these loans. Well, first of all, the lenders aren't going to loan to them. Mm -hmm. the, the days are gone of them getting a loan that's like 80% of their income. If they don't have, if they don't meet the debt to income ratios, they're not going to get a loan. Mm -hmm. So these, it's not like people are running out buying have, with a $3,000 mortgage and they make 5000 a month zero lenders are going to loan that money. They still have to meet all those guidelines. So the, the, so let's say that they're, they're at the highest they could possibly be, 37 38% mm -hmm. of their income. Uh, it's not likely that they're instantly going to say, oh, forget this, I'm just going to let it go back to the bank, right? Because they don't want to trash their credit. And his, a foreclosure is the lowest they've literally ever been. The people that walked last time had ridiculous loan, like completely ridiculous. It wasn't the interest rate, it was the loan to value and all the other aspects of the loan that were ridiculous. Right, and they didn't have uh, equity in the property. Uh, there, a lot of them did strategic defaults. There, there was a lot going on that is completely different than this time around. They had negative equity when they bought mm -hmm. it because they right. were pulling, they'd pulled money out. Okay, here's the last chart. This is extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. One of our contentions, if you look at the bottom three lines, was that the market didn't drop very far. And now if you go, remember, this, that bottom line is not zero, it's 100. So we're starting at a pretty high. Price, prices did not fall very much for the bottom three quarters of the market. So for example, um, all of our rentals are in the bottom three quarters of the market. And we didn't see, when we were looking at comps, trying to figure out what they were worth, we didn't see massive price declines. We were like, no, they're not worth <clears throat> a ton less. But the median was ten was dropping because the median dropped 9% from peak to trough. It dropped 9% and that was it. But what happened was, was the high-end homes. The high-end homes took the biggest decline. Mm -hmm. They took a pretty substantial decline that made the rest of the market appear to drag down. Mm -hmm. But Juana, look at this. Median, the 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 sold price per square foot of the high-end homes, mm -hmm. which is the top quarter of the market, is going up. Is that kind of, I mean, this to me is a little bit bizarre. That, that Remember, the high-end market tends to be more volatile because mm -hmm. it's the mix of properties that come on, right? You know, you, 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 you have some experience in this. You're, right. you're so, seeing this. Right. So what's interesting to me is, remember, so the high-end of the market is kind of a totally different animal. First of all, they either have really short escrows or really long escrows. Most of them have really short escrows because a disproportionate amount of these are cash purchases. So it's a kind of a different situation. Um, and so when you're looking at these numbers, they're almost real time numbers because so many of these are cash purchases and have short escrows. Yeah. Um, the other thing is you probably have people out there looking at what they... Uh, would appear to be bargains, meaning they're looking back and saying prices are less than last year, but they're higher than they were two years ago. So that's what those dots are. Mm -hmm. If you look at the dots, uh, the, the the little blue dot is the is the is the price per square foot, sold price per square foot. So it dropped from the high end, but it's still higher than two years ago. But if you go down to that next group of lines, the red and the yellow and the green, the little triangle is up. It's up year over year. Mm -hmm. So People are, I know people are going to come on the channel and go, Todd, I went on Redfin. And Redfin says the average blah, blah, blah. But it's averaging in these super high-end homes, which are dra making the rest of the market look worse. Mm -hmm. So um, you can't just take you know, a $40 million house that's worth $30 million now that declined by $10 million and say, oh, let's average that into all these $400,000 houses. And it, and it it makes it's you know it makes a big difference, right? So here's the thing about luxury houses that I think people uh, sometimes don't realize is their valuation is different than the rest of the market. 
because these are very unique properties. So you might have, you know, this, um, this house that is just got amazing views. It's, you know, 20,000 square feet. Uh, it's got this, it's got a lift in the garage that brings your car up to your master bedroom. I mean, just all these crazy features, right? So what do you value that house at? Are you going to value it by price per square foot? You know, how, how do you value that? So luxury properties are really difficult to value. So that's why you see these things that maybe they start out, like Todd said, at $40 million and they end up at $30 million. Like, oh, you know, it lost all this value. It's like, well, it never had the value because they're very unique properties. They're like works of art, right? Yeah. Uh, where the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, the value is in the eye of the purchaser. Much more so than cookie cutter homes that you can say, hey, a 2,000 square foot house in this neighborhood sells for this, this amount of money per square foot versus a 2,000 square foot house in this other neighborhood that sells for this amount. So it, it's, it's a completely different situation. Why? And this is part of the reason why the luxury market is so volatile because mm -hmm. it is very unique. And this is, this is another reason why I put this chart up and what I wanted to talk to you all about today and talk about this. Okay, so I grew up in Vegas. I've been in Vegas for most of the last 47 years. And that blue line, pretend it didn't exist. Most of that blue line is the last decade. It's the last decade of these massive, these builders who have come in and they've built these uh, super high-end homes all over the valley, mostly in the west and south. Mm -hmm. Right, um, the Northwest too, and some some in the Northwest. Okay, and if you had taken that out, if that didn't exist, the run up in prices in Vegas wouldn't have seemed that dramatic. It would have been on par with the rest of the U.S., and nobody would talking about how Vegas is crashing because Vegas isn't crashing. If so, on the bottom are the market segments. The median price when we did the, our video four weeks ago was like nine seventy, and then it was a million, and then it was a million thirty seven thousand. Now it's a million fifty thousand. It's been going up, but if you look at the bottom three quarters of the market, the medians for those three eighty, four forty nine, five eighty seven. That's really tight. Mm -hmm. Those are basically that's like one market. It's like we have two markets in Vegas. We have a regular market, and then we have this ridiculous super high end. These are a lot of people who came from California. Right. But when you look back at those lines, those green, red and blue lines, and you go all the way back and you see uh, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, and then today, 2023, it's gone up every year. And yes, peak to trough, it went down. It adjusted just like we said it would. But we didn't have a 40 or 50 percent climb in a year like a lot of people said we were going to have. <clears throat> and the other thing, too, is. That 8% number that I gave you, 8 to 9% number, that includes the high-end homes. So uh, it, it, from peak to trough, we're down a couple percent. So here's the thing. If you panicked and sold your four, five, six dollars $600,000 house last year because it was going to be worth 50% less and you were just going to buy it back at two, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 after the 50% haircut, right? And, you, and it was an investment house, we'll say. So you paid all your realtor's fees. Your realtor is the one who made money, not you. And then you paid capital gains tax because if it wasn't a primary residence, you had to pay capital gains tax and you didn't 1031 exchange it, right? Mm -hmm. Probably because you figured the market was going to crash. You were just going to save your cash. And then you've opportunity cost. You've lost all your rent. You didn't collect rent for a year. You've been sitting on cash now, probably. That's not earning any interest. So you're out 28%. And But remember, for a year ago today, your home prices are up. So if you panic sold in in February, and then today your home is worth more than it was in fit. I mean, that's kind of bizarre. I don't think anyone, if you had said in February, because people were saying interest rates are going up, housing market is going to crash, because the housing market crash videos went full force. I think if you did went in a time machine and said home prices would be up in 2013, they would thought we were crazy to <laughs> say that, right? But this, like literally, this is the data. It shows it. You mean 2023? Yeah, 2022 to 2023, home mm -hmm. prices would be up. Right. So they are up. No, look, did we keep our 20% uh, appreciation? No. Did we expect to? No, we didn't. We said 12. Right. We said 12. It went up 20 and it came down 8. Like literally, I'm not saying we were exactly on, but we we're pretty accurate. No, but, uh, you know, o over time, we know we've said this before, over time, real estate appreciates at about 5 or 6%. 
Uh, you know, whatever appreciation we've gotten over the last couple of years has been absolutely wonderful. Uh, but the idea that we're going to keep all of it, that's not going to happen. Uh, think of it this way. Since we're, we're Vegas people, you go gambling at the casino. Um, you're, you're very happy if you leave the casino and you're up any money. It's the same thing with, with all investments. So long as you're making money, life is good. Would we like to make more? We all would, of course. But at the end of the day, so long as everybody's making money, life is good. Yeah, I think so. So what do you think about the market? Um, is, it, is it scary? Is it good? Are you planning to buy? Are you planning to sell? Tell us what's going on with you. Leave us a comment. We love hearing from you. Uh, if you like the video, if it was interesting, if you like charts, <laughs> um, if you like data, please like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.